Go ahead. Mr. President-elect, go ahead. Can you say categorically a question? Mr. President-elect, can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. No, I'm not going to give you a question. I'm not going to give you a question. Can you say categorically? You are fake news. Sir. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Janda. Welcome back to Dave versus the MSM. I'd like to thank you for joining me today. I hope you had a Merry Christmas, a happy holiday season. And I do think each and every one of us that values freedom and liberty is going to have a great new year. I know that's contrary to what the globalist cult, the deep state, the new world order crowd, the criminal international banking syndicate, the globalist syndicate, the shadow government, whatever you want to call them, they're all the same. They want you to believe it's going to be a terrible new year. It's going to be a terrible year. No, in fact, I truly believe that on a historical basis, when historians decades down the line look back at the last couple of years, including the year coming up, they're going to say, you know, it was a watershed time in our constitutional republic's history. That this awakening that occurred, an identification of the perpetrators of the freedom stripping agenda and the undermining of that agenda led to the salvation of the constitutional republic. They will not point, by the way, I believe, at a historical figure, at, at, at a political figure, at a uh, military figure, at a corporate leader figure. They're going to they're going to point at you and me the public, because we stood up for truth and facts and data and when needed science and used that to defeat the globalist cult. We see the cult acting out with their fear campaigns, with their war campaigns, with their propaganda campaigns, with their censorship campaigns. And that's not from a position of power. It's a, from a position of desperation. They don't want you to think that or know that. But it's true. Today's presentation is going to be about the agency, the dictator in their operation. Hmm? I want to go back in time, back to 1981. William Casey, who is director of the CIA, said the following. And it's this awakening of their operation, of their censorship operation, of their propaganda operation, that's undermining everything they're trying to do, which is why they're so desperate. Here's what Casey said. We'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. Now, people will tell you that are tied to the global syndicate that, oh, that, this Operation Mockingbird with, with, with creating choke points and all levels of me. That's conspiracy theory. It might be conspiracy, but it's conspiracy reality. And Casey told you that back in 1981. Most recently, Pompeo, who was initially the director of the CIA under Trump, what did he say in 2017 when he gave a lecture at Texas A&M University? At the CIA, quote, we lie, we cheat, and we steal, end quote. <laughs> okay, well, there's some more honesty for you. Occasionally, out of these agencies, you do get some honesty. Another piece of honesty from William Colby, who was a former director of the CIA, who, by the way, after he said this, uh, was found that he drowned, he was an avid swimmer, by the way, drowned by his cabin when he fell out of a canoe. Okay, Here's what he said, quote, the CIA owns everyone of any significance in the major media, end quote. Mm -hmm. Their propaganda arm their fear arm, their mis- and disinformation arm. Because if you're misinformed, disinformed, and in fear, guess what? You are an easier target for them and their operation and their dictators that are installed as opposed to elected. When I started my radio show 13 years ago, I 
spoke about the mainstream media, as many people back then called it, as the bought-off lamestream fake media. Oh, I got such huge heat. But over time, everything I said and characterized them as has been found to be true. And it corresponds to what Colby told you, what William Casey told you, what Operation Mockingbird was all about. My first personal experience with how the media was owned was back in the spring of 1988. I've mentioned this before, but it bears repeating. Uh, in the spring of 1988, I, my research in prevention came to the forefront and preventing people from getting injured, preventing people from having to use medications, going to the hospital, having surgeries, going to the doctor. And there was still some semblance of some honesty, little pockets, in the media, and they reported on it, which led to President Reagan hearing about it and inviting me to come to Washington to work on health care policy in the spring of 88. And one of the first meetings I was at at the White House, there were a number of issues discussed, which I cannot go into. But those issues that were discussed that I was privy to were then presented in the media that night. So when I, oh, the meeting's over, I had dinner, and I went back to my hotel, and I was watching the news. Back then, in 88, you had the, the big three, really, CBS, NBC, ABC, and, and then you had PBS. And so I turned on the TV, and there was, I think it was Dan Rather was doing the news, and he was talking about something that we had touched on at this meeting, but what he said was 180 degrees, a complete flip, okay? Uh, so black to white, of what was decided at this meeting on this issue. I thought, wow, he really got that wrong. So I changed the channel, and it was like Brokaw on NBC. And he's now talking about it. And I'm like, and it was almost like word for word what Dan Rather has been saying, which tells you something. And it was, again, exactly opposite of what really happened. And then I turned the channel to ABC, and I think it was like Frank Reynolds or somebody who was doing the ABC News that night. And... He was like word for word as NBC and CBS. And he had it the way they had it, which was completely wrong. And then I switched to the PBS and they were talking about it on their news hour. And again, it was the same thing, but it was all wrong. I'm thinking, holy cow, this is bad. I mean, the public is come, I mean, they're, uh, they're being led astray like terribly here. So the second day of the meetings with the White House, and at the beginning of the meeting, the chair of the meeting this is on domestic policy issues. Says, so anybody have any questions, any concerns, anything they want to bring forward from when we adjourned yesterday? And I raised my hand. I said, yeah. I, I go, um, so when I got back to the hotel last night, I was watching the news, CBS, NBC, ABC, and PBS. And they discussed something that we were had discussed at this meeting yesterday. But we got to get in touch with the media relations people because, oh, they had it 180 degrees wrong. And everybody in the room started laughing at me. Okay? I mean, they were like, ah. And it, and it went something like this. Dave, you're a newbie here. Understand, nobody did their job wrong. Every, nobody did their job wrong. It, what all, they all read was what they were given. And that's the way it works. So Dave, from this point on, and we know you're a newbie, but from this point on, whatever you see on the news, just flip it 180 degrees and you're closer to truth. Not just on the issue we discussed yesterday. Another personal experience. Um, as I mentioned, um, in the 1980s, late 1980s, when I first started, when the media first started picking up on my research, Throughout the 90s into 2000, I came across a lot of, not a lot, some honest people in the bought off lamestream fake media that would push to get the word out that was truthful, small number. 
But come September 2001, that all changed. And all those people that I had networked for 15 years, they're getting information to that would get it out, could no longer get anything out. It was another blockage point. And then personally, I can tell you that in the summer of 2019, now I got to be very careful how I say this because there's, they're still taking down my videos on this platform, which is why, look folks, I can only do so much on these social media things. I cannot, and even on the radio, there are so many choke points, Operation Mockingbird, you know, what Casey was talking about, what, what Colby was talking about. They're still in place, even more so. That's why DaveJanda.com exists, okay? I can put it all on the table there, and I can only put a fraction on the table here and on the radio. That's why that platform is so important. And the cost it, for the subscription information, nine bucks, covers our expenses. Nobody's making a gazillion bucks off of this, okay? Yeah, I got to pay the IT team and I got to pay them handsomely and rightfully so because they've created a fortress to block censorship there. And these goons coming in and taking our stuff and manipulating our stuff and blocking our stuff, that costs money. But the reason why DaveJanda.com exists is so that we can get this information out. Use it. Use it more than you ever have in 2024 and hopefully the years to come. Because starting in the summer of 2019, I saw an umbrella censorship implemented. In addition to the individual choke points, Ed, whether it's here or Rumble or, or on the radio through the FCC or whatever, but more of an umbrella and this might have been coming from the Global Engagement Center, right, through the State Department, wherever it might be. I, but I can tell you, it's universal. And the only thing that escapes it is what we do at DaveJanda.com, the content there. No, you see, the only way the cult can exist is blocking truth blocking facts, blocking data, blocking information. And then they have their implementation arms through their intelligence agencies. You know, I dug up a, a, a note the other day. Um, back in December of 1963, Harry Truman, who actually was responsible for the current CIA, the development and founding of the CIA. Now remember, it came, the CIA came out of the OSS out of World War II. But Truman gave it legs. But he wrote an op-ed in the Washington Post, Washington Post, uh, and owned by the agency, right? The CIA Post, it's known in many circles. Uh, Harry Truman wrote an op-ed in December 1963, one month after JFK took that trip into Dealey Plaza in Dallas, Texas. And we all know, I've put this out for many years, of who was responsible, not some guy up in the, one guy up there never even shot a thing that day. But we know there were agencies behind what happened in November 63. And Truman wrote an op-ed on December 22nd, 1963. And here's what he said. Limit CIA role to intelligence. I think it has become necessary to take another look at the purpose and operations of our Central Intelligence Agency, Harry Truman. At least I would like to submit here the original reason why I thought it necessary to organize this agency during my administration what I expected it to do and how it was to operate as an arm of the president. But there are now some searching questions that need to be answered. I therefore would like to see the CIA be restored to its original assessment as the intelligence arm of the president and only the president, and that whatever else it can properly perform in that special field. 
and that it's operational, underline the word operational, duties be terminated or properly used elsewhere. For some time I have been disturbed by the way the CIA has been diverted from its original assignment. It has become an operational, underline the word operational, and at times a policy-making arm at the barrel of, yep, of the government. And this has led to trouble and may have compounded our difficulties in several explosive, like JFK's head, areas. I never had any thought that when I set up the CIA that it would be injected into peacetime cloak and dagger operations. Some of the complications and embarrassment I think we have experienced are in part attributable to the fact that this quiet intelligence arm of the president has been so removed from its intended role that it is being interpreted as a symbol of sinister and mysterious foreign and domestic intrigue and a subject for Cold War enemy propaganda. We have grown up as a nation, respected for our free institutions and for our ability to maintain a free and open society. There is something about the way the CIA has been functioning that is casting a shadow over our historic position, and I feel we need to correct it. You know, on a number of even independent media platforms, you see this former CIA analyst is, folks, there's no such thing as former CIA. Once CIA, always CIA. It's like once mafia, always mafia. They always get at the beck and call of their masters. They're sinister masters. Truman told you. Bill Colby told you. William Casey told you what it was all about. Mike Pompeo told you. The agency, the operation, and their dictators that they install, not just in foreign lands, but right here in the good old USA. And the CIA is still at it through their arm, the Washington Post. You see, the enemy always points the finger, accuses others of what they're guilty of. Most recent example. Trump campaign hits back against, quote, dictator hit piece in the Washington Post. Matt Gates, love him or hate him, says it actually green lights an attempt on Trump. Similar to, as Gates points out, what happened to JFK. This is Zero Hedge. Over the last week, several outlets published articles warning that a second Trump term would turn America into a dictatorship, like we're not there now with these executive orders and these mandates and these, right? We're there now, have been for a long time of which the cult is guilty of, but they're pointing the finger at other, right, at you and me. The Washington Post, most notably, ran a piece written by Robert Kagan, husband of former State Department official Victoria Nuland, who was integral, by the way, in the Obama White House, actually in the Bush White House as well. And now in the Biden White House. She was responsible for the whole Russia-Ukraine, the, the Ukraine situation. She was actually one of the principals in the Russia, Russia, Russia collusion thing, right? Victoria Nuland, who was deeply involved in peddling the Steele dossier, Russia, 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 which was fraud, as we know, paid for by who? Yeah, Hillary, uh-huh, right? Titled, quote, a Trump dictatorship is increasingly inevitable. We should stop pretending, any quote. Many suggested this was a clear call to oft the former U.S. president. This is what Kagan wrote. Victoria Nuland's husband. Quote, in the Washington Post. The newspaper of the CIA. The CIA Post, as we call it. 
Quote, let's stop the wishful thinking and face the stark reality. There is clear path to dictatorship in the United States. It's already here. And is, it is getting shorter every day. In 13 weeks, Donald Trump will have locked up the Republican nomination. Are we going to do anything about it to shift metaphors? If we thought there was a 50% a, a chance of an asteroid crashing into North America a year from now, would we be content to hope that it wouldn't? Or would we be taking every conceivable measure, every conceivable measure to try to stop it, including many things that might not work, but that, given the magnitude of the crisis, must be tried anyway. End quote. Matt Gates said in response, they're obviously green lighting a really bad event. A la Dallas. Yeah. So, how do we deal with this? Same way we dealt with the other things they've thrown our way that we've undermined. Expose it. Network. Information. Not the bought-off lamestream fake media propaganda, but independent media operation, which you get a, hand, a lot of on through our sites, DaveJanda.com. And network it to friends, families, loved ones, even maybe people you don't even love, people you work with, people you might just casually know. Educate them. Empower them. Expose the underbelly of the cult and their tentacles, whether it's the agencies, whether it's their uh, elect, select, with an S, selected puppets, whether it's their operations. That's the key. That is the key. And that's why they're acting out. Because when you educate others, you awaken others and there comes a point when so many folks are awakened that their operations melt. And that's what's happening. And that's why you see the cult acting out with their wars and with their oppression and with their operations and with their fear campaigns, right? It's because they're desperate, not because they're powerful. And they're losing their grip on control and power. And historians, decades down the line, will look at the past several years and the year coming up and say, watershed time. That's when the people got back on the horse. They got off the couch. They got back on the horse. And they saved the Constitutional Republic. I thank you for joining me today. We are available 24-7 at DaveJanda.com. Stop on by. You will not be disappointed, but you will be educated and empowered. 100% guaranteed. Very few things in life are 100%, that is. Until next time, Dave Janda signing off. Dream big and dare to fail. Thanks for your time today. Happy New Year. Unless you're part of the cult. Then, it's going to be a bad year for you. <laughs>